Uh, we'll, we'll try and we'll make it dry and educate you a little bit. So this is our beginner drum court. They spend the first year on their drum pads before they um, get to a drum. Kyle doesn't let them touch them until they know what they're doing. Huh. Yeah. You lie to us. Uh, no, I just didn't tell you the whole truth until it was too late. <laughs> the Pipers, for this, are going to play their practice chapter. Basically, we learned everything on here. Uh, the same fingering, just high pitch. Um, and the reason we learned this is because with big piping, we have to have everything memorized. Because we don't play with music, so this is uh, less difficult to play. You're not figuring out squeezing and blowing and all that stuff. So this is what we all start with, and they work together. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So um, they're going to play the street. They're going to play the six eights, and six eights. Uh, we have street tunes, and they're the two fours, three fours, four fours, and six eights, and they're all marches. And uh, so every band in the world plays them. And when you go and do parades, this is pretty much what we play. And the two, four, three, four, four, fours, and six eights is the time signature. And so they're going to be playing a six eights, and there's two of each tune. So this is Steamboat and Bonnie Dundee. Okay.
So, and they're usually in, in, uh, <laughs> they're in tune with different notes on our chanter, uh, and the, the snare drum should be usually the, about the same pitch that we're at. Is that yeah. Right? yeah. And they should be the same for us. Uh, the lead drummer is the person responsible for generally keeping everybody in line, making sure that the ensemble. <laughs> they try so hard to keep everybody in line. Um, oftentimes doing it. And keeping time with the white nature, working with the white nature to establish the tempo, to establish the musical feel and expression for a selection of music. Also working closely with the bass drummer to make sure that everything's you know, at the same pace. Uh, and they also end up playing all of the music. And what ends up happening, so you might have noticed, is that we have three drummers that look like we're cutting in and out. It's not because we don't know what we're doing most of the time. Uh, it is because that's actually planned. And it's called pouring or chips. And it's just something to add embellishment to the music and make it just a little bit more exciting. That, in a nutshell, is what we do. So what are we going to do next? Two fours. Mary's Wedding and uh, Baron Rocks. We had him come in. Uh, and he's the pipe sergeant, as, and Reed Maxwell is the lead tip for South <coughs> Fraser University Pipe Band, which is world champion seven times in a row, and I, they get top three every year. So that was a real honor to have them come in and work with us as a workshop. What the Legion bought for us uh, is our uniform. So we wear the Maple Leaf Tartan, which is Canada's tartan, and anything Legion related, we wear that tartan. We have our Sporin, or Merce, as somebody was saying earlier, even though we have girls. <laughs> Belt, um, and we have our hose. And I don't know why, why do we have fancy shoes? Um, <laughs> they look better. Okay, we like to be stylish. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So we're going to play three fours, which is... Three uh, over. Cool. Yeah. Okay.
So the way they dealt with that in the past is they'd have a sheepskin bag, which has this very big, porous hole, so it could absorb a lot of moisture. Here, we would have just regular cowhide. Now, a lot of bands play with these, and so this one is a synthetic bag. And inside, now, to deal with moisture, is it's filled with kitty litter to absorb moisture. These three tubes go to each of my drones. And then I don't have one for my chanter. And the reason why I want that is I want moisture on this chanter. This is a, a wood reed. It's double, double bladed, so it sits in there. And in the drones, it's a, oh, there it is. 
it's a single blade, and now they've gone to uh, composite material, plastic, carbon fiber, all these different things. So we don't want moisture on it. It's very thin plastic uh, blade on there. So the reason why we have this is so that moisture doesn't get on onto this. And that's basically the base. We tune the pipes with our. Uh... <laughs> that takes a lot of air to keep that thing cold. <laughs> Playing pipes is like blowing up an air mattress that has a hole in it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Where was that? You're gonna. Something about blowing things. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we usually tell you. Oh, yeah. Holes, hair, the same kind of mattresses. I got lost when we started dropping stuff. Yeah, so the enemy to us is moisture, and this weekend there's big competition, Red Deer Ellerslie. One day is usually. Uh, blisteringly hot, and one day is pouring rain, and I think both days was raining, wasn't it? Um, both days they had both. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put it all um, it's, it even comes down to the point in a world's competition where they'll watch the clouds, because the absent, the sun going behind a cloud can change the whole pitch of your pipes. So we warm up, it's very timed of how they warm up and get ready and tune, and then when they go on the field. Six eights, the drummer's favorites. Semi-hollow container. 
and you put two ends on it and then make one of them vibrate and you get wonderful noises. That's what drums are. They're generally a memory. Um, with the bass and the tenors, it's very straightforward. Um, bass of wood shell, usually made out of birch for pipe band because it gets the best sound. Um, the heads are made out of some sort of mylar composite, which is just a fancy word for saran wrap. Um, and you tighten them down until you get them to a proper pitch, and bada boom, boom, boom. They sound the way they do. Yeah. The ones that most people find a little more interesting or hard to get into are the snare drums, because usually with these, they would, but. Or, thanks. Uh, they also have two internal mechanisms. They've got the one snare mechanism inside, the one on the bottom, which is one more than most snare drums. And they have a metal hoop on the top. Reason for it is the top head, in order to get the sound that we want, instead of being made out of baby skin, has to be made out of calf, or not calf skin, Kevlar. Okay? Yes, the stuff that they make bulletproof vests of. It's a woven material so that it can hold up to about 2,000 pounds of pressure which is what we're playing with. So when these decide to pop, they do sound like somebody's been shot. And yeah, it really does. But uh, that in a nutshell is what they are. I know we've stopped playing. We'll get there in a second. <laughs> Just this every time I talk too long. <laughs> so you're students. Yeah. So we set it up, and traditionally the pitch for snare drums is getting higher and higher, so we try and get as much of a crack out of it as we possibly can. Yeah, if you want. Yeah. See? It's still <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our snare drum, so I'm going to do next. <laughs> All right. We're really lucky to have Megan in the pipe band. So I told she had to take the audio or the sound. Anyway, she's gonna play the thing. I'm gonna play the thing. Yeah, don't light right up. Okay.
as part of a competition, every band has to know an MSR and a, a medley. So an MSR is a March Dress Day in Real, and it's basically, uh, if you were going to compare it to figure skating, it's the mandatory things that we have to play. So uh, March, of course, slow and steady beat. Every band has to start in formation and then march into the circle. Uh, we decided coming into this year, Michael had a couple of really good scores for um, a short MSR, so two parts each instead of a four-part march, four-part start, and four-part reel. So he brought these along, we really like them. So we're gonna play.
um, coming to this school, I've been here for five years, and, and coming to this school, I actually applied on the job when it first opened, and thank goodness they hired somebody else, because he owns a store, and so the school bought all the information. Anyway, coming to this school, my greatest dream was to play a suite, so a big long piece, with dancers. And not Highland dancers, but regular dancers. And when we heard this year that the program was going to be cut, I, I thought, I have to do it, or I'll have a regret. So at the beginning of the, uh, at Christmas time, one of our players who's not here, Alex Godwell, he really wanted to play this suite called The Beaches of Paris, and it was written by an Australian. And he's really famous for writing different suites. And so at Christmas, I found uh, the music for it, and we decided that this would be the perfect thing for my dreams. And everyone else saw that. So, please. Now, we actually, they need more room. So can we, can we squish people back and just find them?
again a lot a lot we talked about this at the end of the year about how much support that all of you give us in time and coming to pick us up late from school or taking us somewhere on a weekend and we know that this time eats up into your time and as a parent I know that sometimes you're sitting around it's pretty bored while we tune up and, and all that kind of stuff um, this has been so much fun doing this job. I'm so lucky. Kyle and I know are the luckiest teachers in the world. We get to teach our passion and our love. And our only hope is that some of it came through to our kids and your kids. Um, and they, you know, they called us by our first names because I think it was a sign of respect. And, and we gave them a lot of respect because they're creating something that not very many people get to do. We were both really upset. We both went home that day in tears, not only for losing our pipe band, but for losing these kids because they're just awesome. They're the best kids in this school. And we have fun with them every day. There's not a day that, that goes by that we wish that we didn't have to teach this class. And there's not a day that goes by if I had to phone in sick or go on a course that I regret that it has to be on a Wednesday or Monday because those are our days. Yeah. Our last tune that we're going to play is the official school song. And a few years ago we approached Michael Gray, who is a Canadian composer of world renown and fame. And so he wrote a really weird tune for us. And it's, it's March, but it's written in 7, 8, and 9, 8, and... Uh, it's not just 7, 4. Well, it's 3, 4, and a 4, 4, or yeah. Yeah. but... We figured. You know what? For a group like this, there is nothing more appropriate. <laughs> <laughs>
the uh, Lest We Forget concert every year to see Vimy uh, pay homage to those who paid the Supreme Sacrifice. Um, I know he talks to both of you with a great deal of respect. He's had immense joy. One of the reasons that we got in here was because Vimy was one of the only schools, if not the only, that offers a pipe curriculum. And uh, I, for one, am going to be very sad to see this go. And so uh, I don't have the glasses in front of me, but I raise my glass, give a great deal of thanks for the memories. And um, wherever your life's paths may take you, all the best of success. And who knows, by quirk of happenstance, maybe one day you'll be back here at Jamaica. Hats off to you guys.